Spring Revival, and we, uh, this is the Lonberg District, and we're here at the wonderful, beautiful St. James AME Zion Church in Red Springs, North Carolina. It's good to see all of you, and uh, again, just uh, join us in our worship experience. God bless you. And let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen. Let us stand to our feet. Amen. The Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and what? His praises will continually be in our hearts. Amen. We're so glad to have you again on tonight. Uh, let us give praise to God for our wonderful presiding elder. And the wonderful first lady of the district. Amen. Let us give God a praise for the pastor of this house, the host pastor, Reverend Sharon let us give God a hand of praise for ourselves, amen, because God is truly good. And as we're standing, we will have our first hymn for tonight by Union Oak Choir. Let's, go, let's give God a hand of praise for Union Oak. They can lead us to the hand of praise. Amen.
many of you are holding on to God in the same hand. Amen. That's the best hand to hold on to. Amen. All other hands will fail you. Amen. Amen. As we move on in the spirit of worship, we will now have our scripture reading uh, by Reverend Ricky McKinnon, the pastor of the Patches AME Zion Church, and he will also uh, lead us in prayer as well. Amen. Can we give God a hand praise as he comes to us? Jesus Christ. Thank you for the first family of the Lionberg 
District. Thank you for uh, Reverend Charles McDougall and Sister Alice McDougall. Let us thank you, God, for having these wonderful leaders. Father, thank you for every pastor on this district. Thank you for all of the officers of this district. Father, we've come now to be revived. And we know, God, we cannot have a revival until you show up. And God, we know that you are here because we brought you with us. And we know, God, wherever you are, a building is not a building anymore. It becomes the church of God. God, thank you for how you travel with us down here in Red Springs, North Carolina. We know, God, that you are alive and you came to celebrate us tonight. And we're celebrating you back. Heavenly Father, we ask now that you would just wrap your loving arms around this preacher tonight. Oh God, use him like you used him on last night. Oh God, we'll be so careful to give your name the praise. Heavenly Father, we thank you for every church that is represented here tonight. We ask God that you would just give them the desires of their own heart. But God, I ask now that you would loose us to be able to give you a praise. In order for us to have a revival, we need to open up our mouths and give God a praise. But the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Somebody ought to open up their mouth. I wish I had a praying church right now. Somebody who don't mind giving God a praise. Somebody who came to magnify the Lord. Somebody who said, for God I live and for God I die. I come tonight to let the devil know you need to back up off of me and leave us alone. Oh God, and after this amount of privilege, we never walk away from your presence. We just want to be able to tell you, thank you for being so kind. Can I get a witness? Anybody tell the Lord thank you tonight? In the name of Jesus, can you tell the Lord thank you for all that he's done all week long? Can you thank the Lord for what he's doing even right now? If the devil had his way about it, you wouldn't be sitting here tonight. But I believe I got a witness in the house that can say if it had not been, put the Lord on my side. I would have been lost a long time ago. But thanks be to God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let the church say amen.
but it's here and it's now. And God is saying, Jesus, I want to show you my awesome power. Hallelujah. If you humble yourself, hallelujah, and allow me to do it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
pay your light bill. Don't give to her. Because I can't help you with your lights. If your car payment do, go on pay your car payment. Do not give the hundred dollars because you're going to be walking. And I might not know you when I pass you. I'm just telling you. But if you got it and God has blessed you to have it, if you can give it tonight, I'm asking that you join me. Amen? If you don't have it, we understand. Just do the very best you can. I know how it is. When you left home, you knew about what you were going to give tonight. Am I not right about it? I didn't even mention nothing to my wife about money. Normally, on the way here, we make out our checks, Reverend Freeman. But I didn't even have, matter of fact, most of the time we make them out before we ever leave home because it's in our hearts what we're going to give. I already know. Amen. Well, last night at 1 30 in the morning, I woke up and the Lord said, Ask some folks for $100. They got it. They're willing to give it. Some can give $500. Amen? Amen. Look at Reverend Malloy back there. He's searching right now for some of them $100 bills he got folded up. But it's all right. It's all right. He got it now. They don't got this. I wouldn't have called him out if I didn't know he had it. And that's some of the rest of you got it. And if you can get it, come on. I need the finance team to come. They're going to come to you. I ain't asking. Listen, you don't have to be embarrassed by anything, but whatever you're going to put. But if you got an extra hundred, I need you to give it tonight. Amen. Is that okay? Amen. Again, let's pray, okay? God, we're so thankful to you, God, for all of the resources that you've provided for us in our lives. We think about the God that our foreparents, those that came before us, some who worked for five to ten cents an hour. We've heard the stories, God, that they told us. And Lord, we've seen some movements and some other details about the things, oh Lord, about the incomes, how meager they were that they were earning. And yet, oh God, they were able to do wonderful tasks like build a sanctuary like St. James with, with those small, meager, because they were willing to make a sacrifice. Mm. And Lord, I'm reminded that the scripture says that you love a cheerful giver. I'm reminded, God, that the scripture says, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. I'm reminded, God, that the scripture says in the book of Matthew, God, God, that for the givers that you will return 30-fold, 60-fold, and for some even 100-fold plus eternal life. And Lord, we say thank you. But God, that is awesome, oh God, how you keep giving to us. So, Lord, we give tonight, God, not grudgingly nor of despair. Again, because we recognize that you love a cheerful giver. Now, God, we pray a corresponding blessing upon every giver tonight. In the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, amen. amen. Listen, I'm not even saying anything to my wife tonight, but I'm sure hoping she's going to write a $100 check. <laughs> amen? amen? And one thing I know about the ladies, they got their own money. If you don't believe it, ask Miss Carol. She'll tell you she ain't depending on no man for her money. Am I not right about it, sister? Woo! Hallelujah! <laughs> now, where the other team? Y'all need one on each side. You know, they're going to pass the basket. And listen, listen, while they're doing that, sister, sister, sister Freeman, I want you to come on back, do whatever piece you're going to do. Y'all already know the preacher. He's already presented himself last night. Some of you that were not here last night, you came tonight because somebody told you about it. Did they not tell you? I know they did. Amen. I got a car. I got a couple of three, four, five. I've been getting calls all day long. Matter of fact, this young lady, this Jean, Sister Jean down here, she called me this morning and said, now, you and, as a matter of fact, I just put it to you this way. A woman had to come and take the job that two men couldn't do to make it look better. Sorry, and me and Brother David, we're not ashamed. We're going to learn a little something from it. Come on. I want you to come sing. Like I said, they already know. I told, him, I told him earlier this evening, he know them and they know him. I'm, I'm the stranger. Amen? Thank you, you know. Amen? Come on, come on, brother. Take this mic out for real quick. I ain't spit on it, but.
doctor told me that I don't get many times to, to take my patients off of uh, uh, the, the treatment. I think it was chemo or either radi radiation, whichever one it was. The doctor told me I don't get many opportunities to do this, but he said, sir, there is no cancer detected in your body. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God is here. Come on, somebody. The kingdom of God is here. Hallelujah. And he wants to heal and deliver his people. Hallelujah. How many know him to be a way maker? He's a miracle worker. He is a promise. Hallelujah. He's a promise keeper. Hallelujah. He's the light in the darkness. Hallelujah. He's our God. That is who he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for what they're going to do tonight. Hallelujah. We thank you for what you're doing.
men on the Larnberg District. We thank God for our presiding elder and our first lady. Come on, put your hands together for presiding elder Thomas McDougal and first lady McDougal. Come on, put those hands together. You can do better than that. Come on. Bless the Lord. Let's raise the roof. We thank God for good leadership, godly leadership, praising leadership. He 
can turn my family situation all the way around. What word from God can turn my financial situation all the way around? What word from God can bring revival to your church and fill your pews up again? What word from God can change the community? God is still in the miracle working business. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He is a miracle worker. He rebuked the winds and the waves. But the portion that claims my attention is not his rebuke to the sea, but his rebuke to the people. For he turned to his disciples and he says to them, he says, listen, how is it that you have no faith? How is it that you've seen me open the blinded eyes and yet still you still don't believe? How is it that you've seen me cleanse the leper and yet still you still don't believe? How is it that my voice stops the storm on the outside, but for some reason you won't let it stop the storm on the inside? I want to talk about dealing with self in the midst of the storm. I don't know if you've ever been there before, where you've got enough word to know better than the way you're acting right now. Where God has already showed up in your life, and you should be able to steady yourself. Uh, David said it this way, I quieted my soul as a weaned child, but for some reason, you found yourself in a similar situation, and yet and still, you find yourself rocking and reeling uh, in the midst of the storm. I want to talk about dealing with self in the storm. Storms come three ways in the life of the believer. Uh, the first way is they come by way of the cross. The second way they come is by uh, reaping what you sow. And the third way they come is by Satan. The way that the trial comes into my life determines the way that I am to respond to the trial. The Bible says that if it is Satan, the book of James says that I am to resist the devil and he has to flee. Some stuff is still in our lives because we like it. Because we entertain the enemy, it hasn't gone anywhere. But the minute we make up in our minds that we are finished with the enemy, and the minute we decide to stand up uh, for the Lord, God will allow the situation to turn around. The other way it comes is it comes by way of the cross. This is when uh, we come to a situation and we have done everything we know to do. We have sown, we have praised, we have prayed, we have come into agreement with our prayer partner, and yet still we find ourselves in the midst of it and we hear the voice of God urging us to move forward and we have to declare, even as the Lord in the garden of Gethsemane, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. But the other way is reaping what you sow. The Bible says God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Theologians believe that David found himself in option three. Because many theologians believe that this particular psalm is written during Absalom's rebellion. David had been through a lot of things in his life but none quite like Absalom's rebellion. You remember what happened when David's own son rose up against him. Scripture says that Absalom stood at the gate and his people would come in. He would speak to them as they came in and he would say, if I were the king, I would do this and that. If I were the pastor, I would do X, Y, and Z. If I were the presiding elder, this is the way that I would handle it. And the Bible says that he began to pull the people to him. And at the opportune time, he blew the trumpet and took over the kingdom. It was one thing when it was the Philistines. I, I, I wish I had a witness here. It, it was one thing uh, when, when it was uh, 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 Saul. It was, it was one thing when he had to deal uh, with the Ammonites. It was one thing when he had to deal with the Gergesite. It was one thing when he had to deal with all the various tribes that were around him. But now the trauma was in his own house. And there's another dimension. Because the prophet Nathan had already come to him and prophesied. 
and said to him, because of your adultery with Bathsheba, because of the murder of Uriah, the prophet said that violence would never leave David's house. Oh, I know we don't talk about that too much, do we? That's, that's, that's the part we omit out. We, we don't like to talk about that. We talk about the sweet psalmist of Israel. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Uh, we, 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 uh, we talk about David that danced until he danced out of his clothes. Uh, but the Bible says that the same man was also an adulterer and a murderer. I'm talking to people here that are not two-dimensional, but are three-dimensional. You praise, but you still got some hang-ups. I wish I had a witness. I, I, I believe I got about three or four real people here uh, that say God is still working on me. Hallelujah. But somehow, some way, I'm still going to make it. And David found himself on the run. He's running from cave to cave. He's ducking and dodging. He's vexed in his spirit. Scripture says one individual began to hurl rocks at him, and his men picked up swords to go and fight against him. And David said, no, don't bother him. God will find us in you. He was in a low place. And it's not like David had never been there before because David had been at this place before because you remember when Saul was chasing after him, the Bible says that he had to dump javelins. David knew what it was like to be stabbed in the back. David knew what it was like to cry himself to sleep. David knew what it was like to lay his head down on a rock for a pillow. But watch this now. That was when he was 15 and 16 and 17. But now David's in his 50s and 60s. He's got a trick knee. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Some medications he needs to take before he goes to sleep. And he's saying, how in the world am I here again? He said, God, I thought I'd be further along. God, I thought that, that, that my five-year plan would be accomplished. I thought my vision board. Maybe I'm the only one that does that kind of point. So I, I put my vision board. I will be fulfilled. God, this is not in accordance with my five and ten-year plan. I, have you ever been there uh, where you found yourself what you thought was off track? There David is, fighting, fighting not just with the situation, but David is fighting with himself. There while he's wrestling back and forth, David uses the tool that he has always used to get him out. It is the tool of remembrance. Somebody say remembrance. It is a tool of remembering. David begins to remember. Watch this. 2 Peter 1 and 13 says, Yea, I think it meet as long as I'm in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Uh, Peter said, I don't need to give you a new revelation. I don't need to pull out any Greek or any Hebrew. I don't need to come to you with something deep. But all I need to do is remind you of the goodness of God. There's somebody in here right now, you already have the revelation that is necessary for you to come out of your situation. And God sent me here to stir you. Um, my, my first leader of leaders, uh, Sister Mary Davis. Uh, Sister Mary Davis, you know uh, Sister Mary Davis from Brother Wells. And uh, uh, Miss Mary had come uh, over the house uh, to hang out with my wife. Uh, we were on one of those Daniel fasts at that particular time at the church. And you know how Daniel fasts work. Everything comes in and then everything goes out. I hope that's not too much information for you. But you can find yourself quite hungry in the midst of a Daniel fast. And this is before everybody had the cool vegan options. This is before Impossible Burgers. Uh, this is before everybody had the veggie burgers. And this is before pescatarians and vegetarians. This is when everybody in the South ate meat. This is when you went to the place to eat vegetables and your vegetables had meat. Come on, talk to me, somebody. There was protein in the vegetable. Working in Fayetteville. 
restaurant, couldn't find nothing. Went to another restaurant, couldn't find anything. So now I'm fasting for real. <laughs> so I start sending my wife text messages that day. Uh, I'm hungry. Baby, I'm working real hard. You know, is, is, is there a vision? <laughs> you know, without a vision, people perish. Texting her back and forth, and, and I got through the door, and when I got through the door, I smelled a, a pot of vegetarian chili. I said, praise God, bless his name. Amen. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. And, and, and right when I cut the corner uh, to go and to get the chili, I heard the doorbell ring, and it was Miss Mary. Normally, I love to see Miss Mary. I'm delighted to see her. I, I can't wait to hang out with her. She's one of my favorite people. Uh, but when she came by the door, I was just a little bit disturbed because Miss Mary and my wife like to talk. And I have not gotten the progress report on these beans. I said, I'm going to be a good husband. So I sat down because I got messages to work on. And, and I sat down to work on a message, and, and, and it preaches, y'all Y'all know how it feels. Uh, some messages you have to tarry with. Some messages you have to wrestle with the Lord like Jacob and go back and forth. But every once in a while, God will give you a Holy Ghost download. Yes. Oh, help me somebody. When you sit down in the seat and you can hardly type it out or write it out fast enough because God is speaking to you and it all begins to line up and there I am sitting in the chair. I spun around in my computer chair. Praise the Lord all through the living room. Forgot all about the food and as soon as the glory lifted Yes, ma'am. And she said, keep holding on. 
And, and then she said, you know what? When the Lord saved me, this, this is my favorite phrase. And she says, she says, son, he saved me real good. And when she thinks about it right there in the middle of the grocery store, come on, help me. She doesn't have an organist. She doesn't have a preacher. She doesn't have a drummer. But she'll start praising him right there. Do you remember when the church used to catch? Oh,
text now, verse 2, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me. This is to the attack of the enemy, to eat up my flesh. They were ferocious. Did, did anybody feel like that in the middle of the pandemic? Like it was trying to Pac-Man you. Like it was consuming you. He said they came to eat up my flesh. He said, but right in the moment when they thought they were going to take me out, God gave them indigestion. Yeah, right in the moment when they thought they were going to take me out, they stumbled and fell. Tell your neighbor, don't trip. Don't trip because the anointing on my life, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. It'll make you trip when you try to set me up. God has something on my life that I slide through and move through what should take me out because I have the oil of God. Yet praise him. I will praise him when I'm up. I'll 
praise him when I'm down. Hallelujah. And then Paul said it this way. I have learned how to abound. And I've learned how to abase. In all things I'm content. I will bless the Lord. Perfect peace whose mind 
That's it, that's it, that's it. Say like Jacob, I'm not letting you go until you bless her. I'm not letting you go until you bless her.
they're going to say a simple prayer. They're going to say it out loud. But I want everybody to say it. Maybe there was someone uh, that something got lost in the translation. You didn't come down. Or maybe it was nerves. But if you pray it and mean it, God will save you. Now watch this though. Here's what I need you to do. Don't be a secret service saint. After you pray it, you need to let us know. Try to do it before you leave. Amen. Amen. It's, it's like a plant. You need to get it in the ground and water it. Let the roots get down. Yeah. The seed of the gospel wants to grow in you. Amen. Romans tells us if you believe in your heart, Confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. Lift your hands to the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, the Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, we believe. That you died for us. Lord, we believe that you shed blood for us. Jesus, we believe that you are God and the blood you shed washes away every sin. So we accept you as our Lord and Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. Now come on, begin to pray for them. Thank you. 
know about God. You got to understand him with everything. And that there is purpose in everything he does. I was a little upset because he had that trying to drop out of school maybe a couple of weeks before the end of the semester. And mama said to me, my, my wife, we have we actually have nine of these grandchildren. We had three of them when our daughters got married, or four, I can't even remember anymore. And then there's a great grand now. But anyway, anyway, she said to me, listen. It's not your purpose. It's what God is doing. And I understand that. That in each of our lives, there is purpose. I said to that young man that came down here tonight earlier this evening, I said, boy, you hate to be here tonight, don't you? You want to stay at home? He said, no, I won't be here. Woo! And this is the work that God has called us to. I love y'all, I love y'all, I love y'all. 